a theology which penetrates no further into Scripture than to discover that in all ages God is immutable in His grace toward penitent sinners, and constructs the idea of a universal church continuing through the ages on the one truth of immutable grace, is not only disregarding vast spheres of revelation, but is reaping the unavoidable confusion and misdirection which part truth engenders. The outworking of divine grace is not standardized, though the covenant idea of theology would make it so, and as certainly as God's dealings with man are not standardized, in the same manner, the entire field of corresponding human obligation in daily life is not run into a mold of human idealism. Judaism has its field of theology with its soteriology and its eschatology that these factors of a system which occupies three-fourths of the sacred text are unrecognized and ignored by theologians does not demonstrate their non-existence, nor does it prove their unimportance. A covenant theology engenders the notion that there is but one soteriology and one eschatology, and that ecclesiology, such as it is conceived to be, extends from the Garden of Eden to the Great White Throne. The insuperable problems and exegesis which such fanciful suppositions engender are easily disposed of by ignoring them. On the other hand, Scripture is harmonized and its message clarified when two divinely appointed systems, Judaism and Christianity, are recognized and their complete and distinctive characters are observed. No matter how orthodox they may be in matters of inspiration, the deity of Christ, his virgin birth, and the efficacy of his death, covenant theologians have not been forward in Bible exposition. This great field of service has been and is now occupied by those who distinguish things which differ, who, though giving close attention to all that has been written, are bound by no theological traditions whatever. Judaism is not the bud which has blossomed into Christianity. These systems do have features which are common to both. God, holiness, Satan, man, sin, redemption, human responsibility, and the issues of eternity. Yet they introduce differences so vast that they cannot coalesce. To the end that the church might be called out from both Jews and Gentiles, a peculiar, unrelated age has been thrust into the one consistent ongoing of the divine program for the earth. It is in this sense that Judaism, which is the abiding portion of the nation Israel, has ceased. With the completion and departure of the church from the earth, Judaism will be again the embodiment of all the divine purpose in the world.